Good morning. It's Sunday, June 23rd. I'm Lisa Evers in the Fox 5 Newsroom. Thank you for joining us live on the Fox Local app. A slashing on the street near the Queens Plaza station spilled into the subway system. Police say two people were slashed in the face outside the station, and a third victim was slashed inside. It happened around 8 yesterday morning. Police say a person of interest is in custody. Breaking news now. As this heat wave rages on, we now know Con Ed workers will not strike following extensive negotiations. Their union reached a tentative agreement on a new four-year collective bargaining deal with Con Edison. This happened early this morning, shortly after the utility workers' contract expired at midnight. The union says this new deal includes higher wages and a better medical plan. Utility workers now have to ratify this agreement, which is expected to happen in the coming days. Today is the final day of early voting before the primaries on Tuesday. A highly contested race is taking place in the 16th District. That's the Westchester County area. Incumbent Congressman Jamal Bowman is locked in a contentious battle with fellow Democrat and Westchester County Executive George Latimer. The polls have Latimer up by 17 points, but Bowman is being endorsed by Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Latimer has been endorsed by Hillary Clinton. Checking the weather, today is expected to be another hot one as temperatures hit the mid-90s. We could be in for some storms later tonight, but tomorrow is a bit cooler with temps in the high 80s. Raging hot weather is not just making us sweaty. A study shows it also changes human behavior for the worse. Fox 5's Duarte Geraldino shows us how temperature spikes drive up violent crime. Researchers looked at crime data in 28 cities, including New York, and what they found was that when we have huge temperature swings, violent crime goes up by more than 30 percent. In Washington Heights, along the Harlem River Drive, families often cram into a thin stretch of grass along the highway to catch a breeze and enjoy the music, the fun. How often do you come out here? Is this your spot? Nah, not really. I don't be outside. I go to school, I go home. How did I find you outside today? Why today? Oh, drag me out. That desire to fellowship is at the root of a new John Jay College study linking warmer weather with possible increases in violent crime. But as criminal justice professor Darren Porcher explains, it's not that the heat affects your mind and makes you commit more violence. The reason why the crime is higher in the summer months is because you have a greater socialization outside. So you have more people that will attend things such as barbecue, barbecues, basketball games outside, picnics, socialization outside, etc. Researchers looked at spikes in temperatures that were two standard deviations higher than the 30-day rolling average and found crime went up when the temperatures were more volatile. I feel really safe in my neighborhood. I don't know. I feel like things can happen anywhere. So it's, it's just live in an urban city is really crowded. People live on top of people. Things happen. Jonathan Taylor's hunch is right in line with the study that concludes climate change consequences could be more urban violent crime. But that's not stopping Celia Taylor. She looks forward to coming out with her family. During the winter, it's too damn cold. I'm sorry, but no. it's too cold. I'm not going to come out when it's that cold. And that's what's ironic about this study. It also suggests random warm days in the winter lead to more crime than sustained hot days during the summer. Duarte Geraldino, Fox 5 News. Car dealerships across the country have been affected by a cyber attack. A company called CDK that provides software to car dealers was hacked earlier this week by a group believed to be based out of Eastern Europe. They're demanding tens of millions of dollars in ransom, according to a report by Bloomberg News. Some dealerships are seeing a variety of their services impacted because of the attack. CDK. This is essentially the backbone of any dealership. It, it keeps all of your contacts. It does most of your finance work. Uh, they even use it in the service shop. CDK reportedly plans to pay the ransom. No word on when systems will be fully back to normal. Making social media sites less addictive for kids, that's the goal of a bill signed by Governor Hochul. As Fox 5's Antoine Lewis shows us, it requires companies to change the algorithm used for kids' accounts. It's a problem. It's a serious problem. Like, I spend hours doing absolutely nothing just on my phone. It's silly. I shouldn't be, but I am. Brooklyn resident Lulu Ryan admits to a problem that state officials are now addressing. On Thursday, Governor Hochul signed into law two bills that regulate social media for users under the age of 18 by restricting access to feeds created by platform algorithms. Feeds officials say are addictive. They want to go on sites, look for friends, talk to people in clubs, look up some information. They can. There's no barrier to that. We're talking about something that is addictive, intentionally 
designed to pull them in. I can understand why they would want to limit it because, you know, all the other stuff on there. Even before social media, I feel like because we're getting distracted, so I don't think that'll do much. Social media platforms will no longer be able to show suggested posts to people under age 18 nor collect their personal data. Platforms will also be prohibited from sending notifications between midnight and 6 a.m. unless parents give the okay. Kids are overly addicted to social media. It's distracting them in their work. It's distracting them in their social activities and even socializing. Definitely should have been done a long time ago. How are you self-disciplining yourself? I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I set a screen time limit for myself, but I can, like, cancel it. I can be like, no, give me another hour. Like, give me another 15 minutes. This comes as the U.S. Surgeon General called on Congress to require social media platforms to have warning labels similar to those on tobacco products. And while the legislation is the first of its kind in the country, industry insiders are watching and waiting to see just how social media platforms will respond. Author and social media expert Chris Desi. When it comes to our children, I think we need to be full speed ahead and allow for this legisl legislation to kick in and pray that these social platforms will um, implement the different laws. But you have to be vigilant as a parent. And companies that violate the new law could actually face penalties of up to $5,000 per violation. Reporting from the Upper West Side, Antoine Lewis, Fox 5 News. Pop culture royalty meets up with some actual British royalty. Take a look at the selfie of Taylor Swift and her boyfriend Travis Kelsey hanging out with Prince William and his two oldest children, Prince George and Princess Charlotte. The photo was taken after the Eras Tour a concert last night at Wembley Stadium in London. Along with celebrating Taylor Swift's music, the royal family also celebrated the Prince of Wales' 42nd birthday yesterday. Well, scales and tails shimmering in the hot sun. Today, mermaids take over Coney Island for the annual Mermaid Parade. Fox 5's Michelle Ross takes us over to the celebration. The sweltering heat didn't stop these sea creatures from stepping onto land. Gotta have a little something for the shade because it's a little sunny. Coney Island's Mermaid Parade brought out hundreds of thousands of people, as it does every summer to Surf Avenue. The parade is in its 41st year, and people spend months putting together their costumes. This woman started working on hers in January. Every year I come out with a new different costume, so I decided this year I'll be a jellyfish. It also brings out people of all ages. I like all the people watching and waving. I like, I like saying hi to children, and I also love all the costumes. I've always felt like very uh, like an octopus, so <laughs> um, I got some cool octopus pants. I just wanted to be the queen, pearl, clam, goddess, birth of Venus, all of that. And participants aren't only putting on a show for the spectators, they're hoping to also catch the eye of the judges who are right here along the route, and they are taking notes. It doesn't have to be anything like flashy, it can be just something totally creative, totally handmade, something you like throw together the night before, but like, it just sticks out. Organizers also say this is the largest art parade in the country. So whether you're here to admire the marine life or to appreciate the artistic expression, a fun day is sure to be had. In Coney Island, Michelle Ross, Fox 5 News. The U.S. Olympic team is going to be keeping it cool at the Paris Olympics. Team USA is one of a handful that will supply air conditioners for their athletes at the Paris Summer Games, saying it's a high priority and something the athletes felt was critical for the performances. Olympic organizers plan to cool rooms in the athletes' village, which will house more than 15,000 Olympians, using a system of cooling pipes underneath the floors. Well, a mysterious monolith found in a remote mountain range near Las Vegas has been taken down by authorities. The six foot four prison was discovered about a week ago. Las, Las Vegas police say they removed it due to public safety and environmental concerns, and it's being stored until authorities figure out what to do with it. Officials don't know who put it there or how it got there, but say it's not from another world. And one final look at the weather. Today expected to be another hot one as temperatures hit the mid 90s. We could be in for some showers and storms later tonight, but tomorrow a bit cooler with temps in the high 80s. And that does it for us this morning. I'm Lisa Evers. Have a great day. And remember, Fox 5 News is always streaming here on the Fox local app.